on this episode brought to you by maxeffortmuscle.com. We're giving away a Ben's motherfuckers. Fuck Go yeah. to the website. Yo, uh, recap 2021. Big things, huh? Daddy gang. <laughs> yeah, daddy gang's real. Uh, we talked about the transition uh, between offices and everything in between. Dre. Um, yeah, this is a great episode. We just recap our whole year and it's it's hard to recap though because there's so much shit that just goes on though. So it's it's it was kinda harder for me to think back and even think about what happened. <laughs> I, I think yeah. I reminded you more than you said. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cole. I mean I just I just think it's super important to mm-hmm. always reflect on like what you've done and you know, looking back at this year it's just been fucking awesome, but ready to fucking attack twenty twenty two. Yeah, what I like hear from all you guys is that our life is interesting and not boring and there's a lot of exciting things coming up and that to me is part of what as uh the quote-unquote leader i was trying to show you guys that this this can be an interesting motherfucking life (laughs) if we all push and kill it so let's roll to the show round table podcast i'm your boy Corey g (laughs) That's at Small Arms Danny Daddy. He's back. Yes, sir. At Trey Speed, but not Trey. What's your? Trey Bondier. Trey, Trey Bondier. Yep, yes, sir. Don't get it messed up. And the graphic gangster yes, himself, sir. Cole Susack. What's good? I'm here. This is going to be the 2021 recap show. Yes, sir. So, Danny, you just had a baby. You say daddy all the time. Do you say daddy more or less than you did before <laughs> you, now that you are an actual daddy? Now I feel. That's a big time question. Yeah, does it feel question. less weird? Does it feel oh, more? No, does it feel more weird? Or does it feel, feel more true? Oh, oh, that could be it. Yeah. it feels more <laughs> authentic. Oh, it's oh, authentic yeah, yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you refer to yourself as Big Daddy now? Whoa. No, not yet. No, not yet. Not okay, yet. We haven't got there. We haven't okay. got hit that milestone right. yet. Yeah. It's cool, only cool. been a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. I mean, there's been a few times where Linda has been talking to her. Okay. And. In, so, re- in reference to his daddy. Exactly. <laughs> and I thought I would just, I thought, <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to be weird, but it's not weird. I, I don't know. It, it's a weird dynamic we got here going. Interesting. Well, I mean, yeah. that's been part of your vocabulary for a, a long time previous to actually being a daddy. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm glad that we could, you know, it could be a part of our regular conversations here. <laughs> Everyone's really adopted the, the yeah. adopted the word, right? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> we're just trying to see if it's, if it, we should carry it on or not. Should, uh, you already know the answer to that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's good to have should you back we, in the office, Danny. Yeah. It's it, good to see it you, bro. It feels awesome to be here right now. Oh, yeah. New, hey, new backdrop. It's feeling good about that. Yeah, this is looking Got nice. some of the artwork that yeah. our man, the graphic gangster, you know, laced up on the wall. Yes, sir. Got the green wall. First time we ever did it on this. So when you guys think about 2021, right? Yeah. But what, so Cole said something Jeez. about, I think this was the highlight. I'm like, bro, you forgot about this and that and fucking this. And, and yeah. we were kind of thinking about like what pops into mind. I know you got a note section. I got, yeah. Lay I got, it to me, I was Because I was thinking, you oh, know, Cole's like, running the show today. For, yeah, Trey, you're looking off. fresh today though, bro. I yeah, see yeah. you really with your bread, <laughs> player. Yeah. Let's go, Cole. Shout out. Um, <laughs> well, first off, I think like it's, it's like, first off, it's good to always at the end of the year, look back on like, what have you accomplished? Maybe, no question. you know, seeing the things that have, because you get caught up doing things all the time and you really, until you stop and think about how much you did, you know, that's a good gauge on whether or not you're, you know, progressing and trying to get to the goals you want to do sure. or whether or not you need to step your shit up. But I mean, when you can't remember all the shit you did, that's probably good. Yeah. Sign. Whenever you gotta, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, honestly, I have stuff I can't remember what I make during a one day. So let alone a year, mm-hmm. um, but sitting down, like reflecting, like the first thing that automatically comes to mind is like this entire situation, yeah. which was definitely like probably the biggest whirlwind and the most rewarding the most fun the most crazy and hectic so moving everything into here for sure yeah i agree with that because i was thinking like all this stuff has happened but that was only in april (laughs) yeah like i mean i did a throwback thursday of them painting back here before this room even existed right and i was like that was only in april but even like the entire restructure of like the branding the website and all that stuff there was a lot that went into that all these posters were made like i mean it's unbelievable yeah it's uh the the change of the operation though i think has now that we're kind of settled in finally i'm probably the most excited about now just executing in 2022 because now it's set up. But yeah, we're going to still, there's always going to be something changed. We're building a fucking store. We're going to build a Sons of Anarchy fucking, you know, a boardroom. Like we're going to do some cool shit, but the setup is here now. And now we can just execute, you know, which is cool. What about you, Trey? What kind of sticks out to you, buddy? It could be um, personal or business. 
Mm. Yeah, it's a it's like a big question because like yeah, I mean, like you guys say, like we always we think about all the kind of shit that we do and just like one day let alone in a week let alone in a month and then over the course of a whole year it's a lot to take in so um man i think like just honestly like for myself like i would say like just like the financial gains and the financial iq that's come around those on like just how i've leveled up just just this year alone and i feel like this to me i feel like this year was a compound effect of the previous like two years in a sense Agreed. Yeah. I really enjoyed, I jumped on one of your first early lives before I understood the vintage mm-hmm. and how much you love it and understand it, right? I know you got a bunch of different projects going on right now, but like I got to see you outside of being the guy that helps me, which yeah, I knew yeah. you had all these other things, but I, I didn't, you're not like out there at this point a lot, right? Mm-hmm. Like you don't talk, you talk to me, but you don't talk to a lot of people. And yeah, I get you're not on. So then I saw you on social media as your, as a third party friend. Yeah. Right. And I was like fucking drawn and like, damn beefy tag fucking trade knows <laughs> what the hell he like. I'll never forget it. Cause I was like, you were like laying down the game of the shirt. You were just doing what you do, but I got a chance to see it from a different lens. Yeah. And then I started to respect and understand it. And then that's when I started asking you more about it and saw like, oh my gosh, this is like, and then you start explaining that your whole wardrobe is worth this and you can, and it's all assets. And like that, that understanding for me was really cool to see. Yeah. And you didn't really show any of that prior to, to the outside world no, yeah, for anybody yeah. to consume. Yeah. So that's a, to me, that's like a confidence level up too. Just that's my outside no, yeah, perspective. That's definitely increased this year as well. Yeah. Which was <laughs> sick. I was like hype. I'm like, I remember I was like in bed with Rachel just hanging out and I was like on live. She's like, what are you watching? I'm like, Trace is out here laying this vintage game <laughs> yeah. down. Like yeah. I absolutely, absolutely learned a ton about vintage yeah. apparel, all that stuff. Yeah. Like so sick. Some, yeah. Some things you would never even think about and know, like Trey definitely like laid it down. No, for sure. it was cool. So yeah. thanks for that, Trey. Giving us the game, yeah. bro. Shout out. Yeah. Shout out, Trey. That's what writes. <laughs> yeah. <Shout laughs> yeah. Out. Well, yeah. And the other thing is, is I think the pursuit of like, you know, when you're going to do that business, like you the, yeah. putting it together, like just kind of watching all that was really cool. Yeah. But that is part of the financial, I think, IQ mm-hmm, in general sure. too. Danny, about you, buddy. Um, I mean, I think the first thing I think of is a comment Yol said about the um, the culture here. You mm-hmm. know, just being like that startup feel, um, and it's impossible not to go back to you know Black Friday last year when we were scrambling to make this website, yeah, the, yeah, the new yeah. website. So, um, never having experienced anything that um, to that degree as far as the deadline goes, um, and just that feeling of having like. The, you know, we pretty much wiped the slate clean and just like restarted exactly a bunch of did. stuff. So, uh, being able to experience that and then merging into this building and then like, I mean, it literally was, or still is, I guess all gas at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, I don't know. I, I just feel like super lucky to, you know, I mean, it was all there for the taking, I guess, you know, just yeah. like developing a different skill set. Um, you know, we being forced to develop Preston, a different skill set. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Preston and I have talked about it just kind of being like a jack of all trades. Um, you know, being forced to learn a bunch of different skills to kind of just, you know, we'll get know, in yeah. where you fit in. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's where it, the values needed. Yeah. That wasn't a stretch from what you were already doing. No. You know, in the reality of being the senior editor of the site and the app and all these things, but like to then come into the max business, which you weren't a part of previously, mm-hmm. you know, these guys had been around it, but you really weren't. So yeah. that was, yeah. that's pretty big step up. I think just finding, finding the role and then seeing how impactful that role could be was, yeah. was big. Um, with the email marketing, you're like a wizard on email marketing, bro. For sure, for real. Like Starting you need like a Fantasia hat. <laughs> Trey, <laughs> Trey, you got me, Trey. We get you one. Of, we get you one of those. Yeah. So I don't know. That's what I kind of think of, and just you know, just being a part of this team has been freaking awesome. And then you know, it's impossible to not mention having a kid <laughs> recently and Fuck coming. Yeah. Come, I mean, daddy gang. Daddy gang. Yeah. yeah. Coming back into the fold. I mean, yeah, I miss you, miss you guys for sure. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Well, I think it's like, uh, once again, right. Tons of work that was put in Danny's been gone for, I don't even know how long, but like, I even text him like, yo, like we're not doing anything next week. Like, there's no reason for you. Like in theory he's coming back in two weeks. So I'm like, dude, just stay home. I'm going to be gone a couple of days. Cole's going to be like, we just figure it out. And the first of the year it's back to for real all gas yeah. Yeah. like that. You earned that ability. We all earned that ability <clears throat> from the things we just talked about. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's how it should be mm-hmm. yeah. for sure. I think the compounding interest just to kind of echo, um, you know, trade everything too. <coughs> like, I feel like everything's on like, 
it's leveled up and it's on fucking autopilot and like it's just I don't know mm-hmm. everything's firing right now. So. Yeah. I I really feel like this year was the first year where like I really got to establish myself as like a legit businessman, more of a professional because. You know, whenever we took over, this was like the, you know, this is like what we were waiting for. Like, fucking pull me in. Let's see where this goes. And now, like, you know, getting more involved into the strategy of the business, show like proving that I can create, you know, brands and help elevate brands and Mm -hmm. do the clothing, the marketing, like literally do it all. Like whatever needs to be done, like that just instilled like a ton of confidence for sure. not? You know, and that that goes along with watching Trey operate at his killer level, seeing Danny do this, watching Tyler like that's super inspiring. And then it also also makes me think that like now I'm at the level where I can only deal with like this type of work. Like I can't really go into and venture out with mm-hmm. like businesses or people that don't understand like this. Like I'm out here trying to re- like make like real fucking businesses basically. It's all the trial and error. Now we know. Now we know what to fucking do for sure. It's- to win yeah. yeah so the way i look at it is so you guys remember i started in supplements in 2008 right i've always been a part of a brand obviously from muscle farm to max effort being one of the main guys but i've never really been the main guy just a fact right so it took me from 2008 till last year which was at the end of the year when we did that to be the majority owner of a supplement company which sounds funny to say out loud but it's just the fucking truth because when I came into to muscle farm, I didn't have no money. I was personal training. You know what I mean? I was personal training. When I came into Max Effort, obviously I was partners with John and we owned, you know, the heavy percent together. So to be the clear majority, clear CEO, and then obviously with the support of everybody, um, that right there was something I've I've taken a lot of pride in and excitement and um yeah, I, I really enjoy that opportunity because I've been waiting for this opportunity. Now I forced it to happen to your guys' point, right? I came to everybody and said, yo, we're about to fucking roll with this. But I think like I take it like super serious and I'm, I'm excited to finally show my skill set as the clear number one. I don't walk in here every day thinking I'm the number one guy. It's a team effort. I think you guys all know that. But I know that at the end of the day, if I fuck up the money, it's really my fault, right? And I got <laughs> I got to figure it out personally with the business, whatever. And so I think like, from the investor emails to the way that we're trying to operate with the cash flow to the strategy with you guys to all of those things like that that was like you know that was like a big deal for me for sure mm-hmm. so. and that was a big learning experience because like n- now like i know that eventually if i'm in that position i know exactly how to operate yeah. exactly exactly how to manage you know dealing with investors and dealing with all this stuff so yeah and get a cool. chance to do it my way that's yeah. really what it comes down to right like I can't do this on my own. You guys knew. I told you that when I came to you guys, like, yo, if I take these risks, like I'm going to need help. Everybody's got to help. But I know that like those major decisions and these switches and to buy the fucking car and do these things like, you know, that I've got to rely on what I, what I believe can really roll with. But I also think that I've been a pretty open book on, Hey, I think I texted off the chain. Like, Hey, anybody got any ideas for how we'll go do this the next couple of days? Like, I don't know Mm -hmm. all the time. And all of you guys keep me younger that's part of why I like having all these different age groups. Right. Um, so yeah, this, this has been, it has been an exciting year for me from that standpoint. And I think that now I know I already saw what's possible guys. So like I already, I already seen it happen. I know that if we keep doing what we're doing, everybody can feel the momentum. I mean, it ain't fake. You can't, it just is what it is. Right. So I know it's what's coming. That's why I told Tyler the other day, like, I already know what it's going to feel like when we, when we push 10, 12 mil, I already did it before. And it's going to be fucking different this time though. It's going to feel different. We're going to eat different. We're going to operate different. And, um, there's a big opportunity here. So it's exciting. So that was a long rant, but I'm ready to rock. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. What one other big thing I guess is the fact that all of us basically learn an entirely new like financial industry and crypto yeah like being not being not being afraid and watching from the sidelines but really just fucking diving in that's probably been one of the like the most interesting and coolest things to be a part of yeah i agree with that you know i'm all up in because (laughs) i just feel i still feel like we're so early there's still tons of people who don't understand you know the basics of it and we're just like in it i mean i just cashed out crypto dividends yesterday you know what i mean for like a pretty good month so yeah like i think that here, the other thing is, is me personally, another thing that a lot of people don't realize, we didn't own the building at the gym. We didn't own the max office, right? Which was the old MP office. 
because I didn't want to own either of those buildings. I didn't want to be there. I wanted to be here, right? I wanted to be in this town with this type of building. I wanted this dream situation, which I manufactured in my head for a really long time, but I didn't know was actually available, right? Till I walked in and saw it. So I think like being the actual personal owner of the building and then that that also feels different. So there's a lot of like of just like in our own ways, a levels up that happened in this previous year that is financial, that is understand, that is like, it's weird. I definitely don't think we're like done, right? But I walk in and go that I understand that the gym probably, this might be the last spot for the gym, right? I own the building, it's in my town. Like when we're not here, we're probably not here. It's mm-hmm. probably in my garage. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and I'm like 70 or whatever. So it's like, I've always pushed now, well, we need another warehouse and other locations. I'm sure when it comes to max, right? We're going to need more space or whatever other business we decide to do. But it's like, there's something weird about a 20, you know, I've been doing this since 99 to kind of walk in and go, wait, is it? Cause you know, there's only one location worldwide with old school. Mm-hmm. So it's like, is this the, you're always looking for, I knew that other spot wasn't the last spot. Mm-hmm. It might've felt like it cause we were there for a long time, but I knew it wasn't cause it wasn't the you know situation. So that's a little interesting for being, you know, cause I'm always pushing. Yeah. So, and I know there's still a push. We're still going to change things, but like that, that's also comforting in a good way. Cause you, I know I can just execute. Mm-hmm. I'm not worried about chaos. And so I don't know, there's something different about walking in and owning a building too. So that, that was a, that was big, you know, cause some people might perceive things are different, but you don't really know. Right. And that's why I'm telling you, like all of these are a lot of first for me from a kid that had no financial IQ growing up. So it's really, it's exciting. Mm-hmm. So yeah. hopefully you guys will see these things as you guys get older and be like, yeah. I remember when G did that and this, and hopefully you're doing it much younger. You know what I mean? Which would be cool. Do you feel like the pressure is still on right now compared <clears throat> to like when you were going through the process of finding this building? Like, cause you weren't expecting to find this building. Mm-mm. So like, did you feel like a certain amount of pressure? Like, when you merged over and like, do you still feel that pressure now yeah. that we're kind of like settled in? Or? Yeah, yeah. No, I still feel the pressure because I won't feel less pressure until everybody got their cash back, which will happen sooner than later. And that everybody, including in this room, is getting paid what I think they're worth, right? Because I know none of us are there yet. It's just what it is, including myself. So it's like, I think, and that's my own thing I just think about, right? But yeah, I'll, I'll always feel a different kind of pressure. Now, what I do like is I feel like I'm supposed to teach you guys, right? Mm-hmm. I like that you guys got to see me go through that. Yeah. Like, I take a lot of pride in that because you hear these stories and I tell you all this craziness, but you actually like now we're in it. saw it in it, part of it. And you believe now, if I come to you and say, yo, we're going to fucking do this and it's going to be this many million in this, you have a reason to go. Geez, about it. All Fuck right. Yeah. I believe him. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> not just some story I told you. So yeah. I, I take a lot of pride in that. Yeah. So I was probably like excited, the most excited about that challenge to go through both of those big challenges, um, heavily weighing on me, my own cash, my own abilities, and then to get them done in a period of time. Um, that, that was, yeah, that was big for me. Um, I kind of thought I was done with that stuff, guys. I must be honest with you. So I liked the challenge again. It was yeah. cool. Yeah. You know, I'm so. like, I'm super appreciative that we got to go through that. Yeah. Like, it was big. I like just the <clears throat> mentality and seeing that just the fucking it just dog in us. It was, it really did like instill confidence at the highest, at really yeah. the highest level. Like I don't think you guys took and ran with what you needed to do. And I never had to talk about it. Yeah. It was just, and like being done, like we always talk like the owner's mentality. Mm-hmm. I like, you know, before I always pictured myself being in some sort of spot, mm-hmm. you know, having to make decisions or do, you know, go the extra mile and like be willing to that. But now I truly feel it. Yeah, like yeah. I truly understand it. And it's, it's huge. Yeah, you're not yeah. reading it in a book. Yeah. I'm not you're reading a book. I'm actually feeling it. it. Like yeah. it, it actually feel like what I'm doing, like fucking matters. Mm-hmm. And like, it's, it's on me to, you know, do what I got to do. So then everyone else can do what they got to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about from the media standpoint, like all of you guys got more comfortable doing this stuff. Like, obviously, like we've yeah. talked about so many different things over this year. Um, Trey, like when you sit down in the chair, does it feel like second nature now? You, I mean, it seems like it does. Yeah, it's just, it's a lot. Yeah, it's like, so like before when we first started, you know, like you get like nervous and you think about yeah. what, what the hell what am I going to say? What are you going to say? <laughs> or, or, or like, what are we going to talk about? But yeah, just like the, just how like you've always thrown us on the show in the first place and been like, we don't even know what we're talking about. <laughs> so like, you know I mean, just like aspects like that yeah. and then just compound effects on top of each other all yeah. throughout the whole year, like just the confidence boost that we've all gained uh, from it. You, us you can a, tell the difference. Us doing a year on the porch was good. Yeah, yeah on the porch. Fun. Yeah, it was fun. It was great. 
Yeah, and and think about this, like, you know, we've been texting back and forth about numbers, me and Trey, and about some like he's get we getting some of the assets from the old people that used to uh, sponsor, and like you start to look at like what we're building, and mm-hmm. you know, it's just time involved. Yeah. I mean, look at the situation we're in right now compared to where we were recording a year ago and having this whole setup and just really yeah. getting started. Yeah. yeah, it's been really fun, like, growing the podcast because it's really awesome whenever there's people that I would never expect to listen to the podcast reach out and say that they connect, they, they resonated with something I said or, like, yeah. you know, what was going on and, like, they really messed with it. Like, I think that's probably, like, one of the coolest things. Having a platform and a voice where you can even have that opportunity to make a difference, like, I take that real serious. So I did a daily fire the other day on being positive, you know, about positive change because we're also, you know, documenting what we're going through. Mm-hmm. You guys are yeah. never going to go not like 10 years from now, you're going to come back and listen to some of these episodes and be like, damn, like, I, I think it's really, I think we're blessed that we're able to capture it. Yeah. I feel the same way every morning when Trey's taking pictures and video, I feel the same way. I know I'm never going to be mad that I went back and we were that I, we are so consistent with this stuff. I'm going to be so happy I did. I already know. I'm happy yeah. every time I listen back. You know what I mean? It's, during the pandemic is a good example. When I was listening to some of the daily fires from the t- pandemic or re- reading them when Danny's transcribing them, capturing stuff, bro. Mm-hmm. It's cool. Yeah, it's cool. What up, Danny? Yeah. Well, I mean, the <laughs> natural – the nat- <laughs> oh, this, this plays into perfectly. Um, Please. I'm – you know, the natural awkwardness is never going to go away. Yeah, me. but that's you, though. Yeah, that's just kind of me. Like, I'm always going to be nervous. I'm always going to be thinking about what the fuck I'm going to be saying. Like, or what you're that, wearing. But What's that? What you're wearing. Or, yeah, what, what I'm wearing. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> when I'm thinking about that. Um, but I don't know. O- over the past year, it's de- it's brought my confidence way, way up. And it's allowed me to, like, actually, like, freaking relax and, like, be in this studio and actually mm-hmm. listen to you and actually hear what you're saying so I can actually ask you a good question. Um, and that's Hell only yeah. gotten better over time. If you're nervous, then you're not really listening because you're thinking about what you're going to say because you're not being exactly. present. Yeah, exactly. And that's what, that, that, well, that's what I was doing, you. like, every yeah. time. <laughs> Maybe excluding, like, episode two on the porch. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. where we, like, dug yeah, in the was, fucking weeds. It was wild. Got real deep. But, um. But yeah, I don't know. It, it's been an interesting Which process. Which we should rerun. Yeah, yeah, do, we should. Do rerun. you do you think that ever since you fully embraced having the Instagram handle at Small Arms Danny, life changing, that it has Dog. you know took took the you know the <laughs> gates away and just let the the daddy gang and the Small Arms Army just run wild. <laughs> Because I think because he got an alter ego, bro. No, it's that's like what WWE. it is. It's like Donnie Traps. Donnie, hey, listen, Donnie Traps, man. That was all. That was that was in here. That it contributed. Was that contributed. It was there. To yeah, the yeah, for, well, absolutely. Yeah, I, I almost equate it to, I mean, if you've ever seen the movie, Adam Sandler movie, Big Daddy, it's like oh when the kid God. throws the, the glasses this, yeah, on. Yeah, that's exactly, that's what you do the same thing. Yeah, it's like you don't give a so shit So have I been anymore. just throwing the glasses on for years or yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> At, when you do that, you just don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's kind of like that. No. <laughs> yeah, I, that, oh, cool. no, that, that is huge. That is huge because we know how, like, you operate. You are you are small arms, Danny. <laughs> yes. That's how it is. You're not DeWalt 03. You're small arms. <laughs> 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 now the world knows Cole. Yeah. it's never gonna go away how happy you were the day that that, that he tried stumbled. to tag you and hey. it was actually real that was, yeah, one of, was, that, was <laughs> one of, that was one of the best days of the year that was amazing oh geez i was pushing hard for that you really were yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was like i can't give him what he wants right now i gotta just let it naturally happen i'll tell you though i think one of the the more exciting things of rooting for others was rooting for Danny on the go ruck though. I know that was more recent, yeah. but like we, we here at the office were like so fired up. And when I saw you on their fucking Instagram, like yeah, so looking cool. all rugged and shit, I was like, <laughs> fucking <laughs> fuck. Yeah. Yeah. We were like, fuck yeah. Danny's going to win this motherfucker. <laughs> I'm like so, near yeah. death. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, he looked like you're about to die. But <laughs> yeah. We were like checking the lives and like, like generally like ex like checking often excited and like rooting for our homie. Like that was really cool. Yeah. Like that was fun. that was fun for me. Yeah, I had yeah. no idea. Like, that yeah, of course, everyone was gonna be. You know, there were so many people that reached out to me. And that was probably the most everybody's ever reached out. It's because it's a major separator, Danny. Yeah. Like when you put yourself out there like that, right? That's why I've always pushed these guys to push their social media out too, which they're getting better at. I see them on Twitter all the time yeah. lately, which is amazing. Like, or when Trey did that first kind of live, like. When you see like when people are putting themselves out there, out there like that in a, in a way like you are pushing yourself to do that, you're starting a new business, you're doing like it, people start to see like man, there's really some like stuff to these guys. Like th- this is like because most people are just scared to do any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. I've never been that way, but the average person is that way. 
So when you can, especially something that's that fucking hard, like physically and mentally, and you're putting yourself out there to, for everyone to see you fucking struggling and do it like, dude, of course, like that's big. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a respect thing, man. Yeah. You, I know you didn't do it for that. You did it for you. Yeah. Right. To sure. challenge you. But it's like, it's the same thing with whether it's shows or meets or whatever. Like anytime you're putting yourself out there in that different kind of light, you know, because you're putting yourself out there to be a failure per se too. Oh, for sure. Like it's, it's kind of like how Michael Easter talks about like doing that one thing per year where you have like a 50% chance of yeah. failing mm-hmm. like that. The, that's what it was. The mo- what's he call it? It, it's a, like a Japanese word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget yeah. what it, it starts with an M, I yeah, think. Emoji? Yeah, yeah, I think it sounds like right. That, yeah. yeah. He just tagged us yesterday, taking the greens. Did he? He fucks with him. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Just saying. Shout out Michael Easton. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Comfort out. Crisis. Comfort Crisis is a great book. Book two coming soon. Yeah. Um, Comfort Crisis is good. Yeah. But uh, the whole thing was a, was, a, was a progression. I mean, I did my first event in 2014, then I don't think I even did one for like two years or something like that. And then it was like the the next level up, the next level up. Because I was like going through this process of like convincing myself to, to do that event because mm-hmm. I basically was was scared of that event. So like signing up for the one in May, which was the same duration, so 48 hours. But um, that was a huge step in the right direction. And then once I did that, that like set my confidence way up. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, you actually do have a fucking shot at this, I think. So I don't know. It was a cool process very cool yeah, Trey moving awesome. downtown was a big deal for you wasn't it yeah kind of got you closer to where you see yourself how you see yourself operating just like when I got this situation going on you yeah know just I mean? like the lifestyle change yeah. in general this year has been like crazy and I think that is, that alone like shows the growth and it goes back to like the compound effect of like over the years and stuff like that so like just I guess one like an example is like saving the money to like be able to actually like just afford to like live where I live at and like yeah. not like have to think about it and stuff like that yeah just, you know, automatic draft out the account. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's one of the yeah. things Anthony said yep. that really yeah. stuck out to me because Anthony Oliveira, who grew his business a lot this year, and he was like, yo, all well, my bills is on auto pay. And I'm, like, I'm thinking like my shit's been like, I haven't even thought about that. Right. But that I remember when you get to that, where whether it's your rent, whether it's whatever, especially if it's in a place that costs more and sweet, you're like, don't even think about it. That's how it should be, by the way. You're yeah. pushing so hard. But like when he said that, I was like, yeah, man, I remember that feeling now. Like, that's cool. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's, yeah, that's exciting. The easy decisions Yeah. when you're doing, that's one thing Mo said a long time ago, when you're, you're doing something that you want to be doing and it's an easy decision, it feels good. That's what the work's for. Yeah. For sure. Sick. Hmm. Well, one, th- one thing I was thinking about was like just all the awesome connections that have been made and also like yeah. seeing, you know, the homies that we ride with, like Dos and Taj just fucking yeah, it's killing the gym. Like Juan's make, killing it. Making their branding for their gym was probably also one of the coolest things I did this year. Well, and to see Russell Westbrook roll through yeah. and freaking so, you know, yeah, all those these guys like are huge athletes. Those guys are super inspiring and they're fun to work with. You know, watching yeah. Anthony, you know, make his big move. Mm-hmm. Then you got the homie Zach, like all yep. that. And then meeting Coach Deegan, connecting yeah. with Deegan, getting him in the podcast world and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just you like know? that's what I'm saying. It's just like yeah, <clears throat> he had a banker <throat> quote in his email the other day too. Did he? His emails were like yeah. one of the best yeah, emails. So he's a, for sure. He's a thought provoking writer yeah. for sure. Yeah, for sure. He's always uh, what I like about him is like, yeah, you're always in it for a half hour if you're gonna talk to him. So if I see him at the gym, yeah. like if he's working out, I try not because I just know like he's just one of them dudes you you can't get not get wrapped up in talking to because he's so yeah. good. I just, just want to listen to him talk. Yeah, yeah he's good. And, and, and he like tries so hard for you to talk. So it's like because yeah. he's humble. Every yeah. every time I walk away from Coach Deegan, I'm like, wow, that was a great conversation. It is. And talking to just, a sage, it got me fired up. Yeah, you know, <laughs> nah, like so. That's a great example of like something I'm real proud of this year because I know that about him. And I know we have the resources to help, right? Yeah. I think he's an amazing guy and podcaster and just like writer and all that. But like, that's why I was like, yo, we just need to start something. We got content Kyle on the chair. Like sure. we, I'm at the office. Let's yeah. ride. You know what I mean? And so like that has been interesting because the people that have reached out from that show, the coaches clinic are different than are reaching out about this show. Right. And our networks are now going. Yeah. Which is also really cool. And there's a lot of lap over of people that knew both of us that we, they didn't know we knew each other. And so is that, that's been really, that's really cool. I think one person also who made a big impact on just the way of thinking and, you know, really taught me a lot about so many different things was Peters. I agree with that. Peters. Just Having Brian Peters involved in everything is huge. Yeah. Peters is a fucking man too. Hey, shout out to Danny. He brought him in to the <laughs> yeah. fold. Cause yeah. we, cause he was on the uh, round table 
mm-hmm. like early like early on. first early 10 on, episodes yeah. right hey yeah. were you peter's offensive lineman <laughs> were you were you blocking for him um i went i wasn't like a starter at that point oh, okay no. yeah he was a senior when i was a sophomore can you imagine that yeah, bro. yeah he was i think he was just tight end on on offense but okay yeah, then safety yeah peter's um the way he has off <laughs> the way he operates his network is crazy juicy like just like the the way that he like his expectation of himself i know what he draws off our crew we draw off him like he, mm-hmm. he's been a great addition for sure yeah um it's been impressive to watch and i'm excited to watch his career which i still think he's gonna end up playing ball personally but whether he's in the nfl or he's building chasing edges i'm excited to watch his career kind of and i'll be here yeah. like 100 percent, whatever that dude needs Peter's just a fucking he's man. a ride or die for, for sure, sure. <laughs> like he's, he's so good yeah no, that's it. Yeah, so think about like those two guys just entering our networks. Like even though you know we knew you knew Peters for a long time, but like and and knowing Serrano all that time, but never really messing with him. Mm-hmm. It was kind of wild. I love listening to those two episodes that he's put out with Serrano so far yeah. too. <laughs> like they're Serrano is such a maniac. Yeah, it's so funny listening to him. Yeah, though. yeah. No, no, it's really funny. Um, Cole competing this year was another big deal too. I had that written up, like written on my list. Yeah, yeah, getting back to the platform. I, that was a very fun, like fun time again to mm-hmm. get back into that. Not only that, but like I feel like the juice and the 4M crew, like all the guys. I feel like we have the crew that everyone is, you know, super supportive of each other. You know, <laughs> just yeah, yeah for um, sure. Like like the powerless meet in Tennessee was a fucking blast. Oh yeah, you know. There's just been a lot of crazy shit happening, like dude. The recently. Tennessee meet, yeah, it was big for me too to get back on the platform and just being able to take something super heavy and really push yeah. it and being in that like maniac fucking environment of yeah. like you know, yeah. The I will say triple ply craziness. I yeah. fucking love it. We got the bonded dinner too. Yeah, yeah, we got oh, the bonded yeah. Hooters. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, shout out Hooters, dude. Matheny, they got good food. Uncle Corey sent us. Uncle out Corey, yeah, one, yeah, yeah. One, one thing. <laughs> Rachel just asked me about it the other day. She was going through the bills or whatever. She's like. Did you eat at Hooters twice? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Hooters. Yeah. Yeah. That, Go ahead. Sorry, that, Cole. That was, uh, that was also a great time because, you know, I feel like I try to have, like, one, like, really good experience with a lot of people, and I got one with Tyler Galbraith and Matheny and Trey whenever we went to, on Tennessee's <laughs> University campus. of Tennessee, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were out all night. That was a blast. Yeah, um, yeah that's one of those ones you just be like, yep, signed up yeah. for this. <laughs> yeah. But competing again, that was the first meet where I actually went up to a bar and I was like, yeah, 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 the entire time. Yes. <laughs> and like, I you didn't had fun. care. Yeah, it you was a fun. blast. Well, and like, uh, <laughs> I was telling Mitch this morning, because, you know, Mitch has been an OG, been, he's been around mm-hmm. here for a long time, about as long as Todd, not quite as long, but close. I'm like, yo, your little brother and my son's on the board, bro. That's how long we've been around <laughs> here. <laughs> I'm like, it's fucked up and we ain't on there. Yeah. But uh, that was really cool. Um, I wish I would have done the meet with AG, but not because I wanted to actually help him and handle yeah. him. You know what I mean? And obviously I was rapping for you too. And it was like, whenever I saw the confidence of he missed his third because that judge fucked it up, but uh, he hit my leg too early and I called him up. But the the record was 430. And AG looked at me and was like, I can squat 431, dad. I can beat that record. And believed it one million. I wanted to see him try it. So fucking bad. And I was like, well, we can't jump from 380 to 430. I mean, I don't know. Maybe he could have because that's how we operate around here. That's like my jumps. But he ain't never done it before. So I was like, I didn't want to like get him hurt. He's coming up for baseball Mm -hmm. season. I'm like, let's make 402. They'll give you a fourth attempt because it's a record in the org. And he was like, I got that. I was like, we can beat it by one pound. I already checked it. And that that was a little frustrating because even if he missed it, I wanted to see him fucking just take take it. it. Yes, dude. So look, we got chalk moved. He got his name on the board at 148, 380. That's a huge accomplishment. But I could see it. He's like, man, we left some out there. I'm like, oh yeah, we definitely did. Because 402 is a fucking smoke show. Yeah. Yeah. So that 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 experience though, um, I think well, one, he competed a year earlier than I did, which is kind of crazy to mm-hmm. think about. Mm-hmm. And his transition in the gym since we moved it here. And I'll say this forever. The main reason, other than all my only my selfish stuff of why I wanted this all together. My main reason is I could not stand that AG was not at the gym, and I'll preface that because of just the geography of it being like forty minutes from the house, and us having to get other kids the sports. I never was at old school gym past six a.m. A lot of people don't realize that I never went back to the gym ever. I didn't know half the kids Dustin train. I didn't know any of the members past six a.m. I have not been involved in the gym past six in the morning for like a decade plus. So it means AG was really never at the gym. 
So he had, you know, we, we went on the weekend a couple times. It's not the same as like training like we are now or him coming in the morning. So like it was all based around, I need to get this kid in the gym. And it represented for my family, like now at his age. And, and I honestly truly believe because that was my main push that that's why it happened because it's that true. I mean, it was like, I was like, I just kept thinking like, I got to make this happen. I got to get it done. And so whenever I like, we were training across, I mean, we were literally training re- literally across the highway in Bobby's yeah. garage. It's literally not, it's a mile yeah. from here. How, I mean, that's pretty close, right? So like all these things and that literally started becoming my like obsessive thought. How fast can I get old school here? And when I called Dia, and was like, yo, start looking for some land, bro. Like I- I'm serious about making this happen. And he was like, hey, you figure it out. Like, let me, you know, he's building this house. So he's like, you, if you're going to get a building figured out, gee, let me know. And then, you know, when I started sniffing around, it was only like a month later and I ran into this place and I just knew it. And so like to be able to get the transition of how we were operating and now how he's operating, like that's like the dad stuff I needed to make happen. Um, All of this other stuff was a plus and I was going to do it anyway, but like it really happened and showed itself because I think my intention was probably like the most like true and, and real. It's kind of some deep shit. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> but I mean, I honestly think that's why it happened so fast. Yeah. Because I was like obsessed with that. Like I was like, he needs it represented and this is the best way to do it. And I obviously wanted all of this to happen anyway. Mm-hmm. So anyway, that's what I think. Okay. Some big shit, bro. Yeah, boy. <laughs> it's so much. Yeah. What else you got on it's, your notes section, Cole? It's hilarious <laughs> just to see like how fast things move though. Because like when I like fill someone in, like, the status of the office or like this room going up or mm-hmm. the painting, like they're, they're like baffled that oh, it's yeah, happened yeah. in the time it has. Yeah. Nothing yeah. moves slow. <laughs> what else you got on there? We really kind of hit it all. I mean, we? yeah. Like the one other thing I can think of is just, you know, me and Trey, like trying to grow varsity creative yeah, in, our, in our yeah. own like unique way, mm-hmm. you know, cause, cause really like, we like we also want to have like a platform that we can share sure. and educate on like what we do and try to get people to enjoy yeah, that. Of course. And it was in the beginning it was trying to figure out like what lane and avenue we do because at the end of the day we're not like truly like creatives trying to, you know, teach other creatives how to do the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Like we're trying to take our impact and branch it out into, you know, show businesses how to operate, show mm-hmm. these people how to operate and stuff like that. So yeah. we're really trying to be more stuff than, too. Yeah. Yeah. trying to be more than just like from some freelance workers. Yeah. Like I'm not like, I'm trying to be more than just a dude who makes graphics. Yeah. Like obviously in like this entire situation, like again, growing as a professional proved that like I am more than that. You well, know, you so. went to business school for a reason, Cole. Yeah, facts. wasn't you didn't even go to school for what you yeah. do, like what you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do business, but my point is like it wasn't like you went to teach yourself how to do graphic yeah. design and that was it. You went to business because you want to yeah. run shit. Me personally, one meathead first. <laughs> facts. Two same, same. businessman second. Dog. Three. Then I'm a creative. Dog. You know? <laughs> yeah. You, you, yeah. You got to get through number one and two first. Yeah. Well, when I wrote. Um, the thing on IG the other day when I, I was just in here on Saturday or Sunday by myself and I took a picture and I was like, uh, and it was early in the morning. I think like Tyler and them had to meet. So no one was here. Usually there's a couple other guys here on Saturday. And I was like, just, I mean, I've always known this, but I wanted, I wanted to rewrite it. Like, yo, this is it. Like this, if there's not this, there's not, there's nothing else. The gym isn't represented at the, at the level of how true it is to me. Just like talking about having AG here. Right. Cause I knew it would impact, like it impacted me the same way. If I'm not a real lifter first, like I think people get, and that's what Anthony kind of explained to me a little bit, like the business stuff makes it hazy a little bit. Well, just because one meathead first and I enjoy business and I had success in it, like it doesn't mean that I get up thinking about business first because that's not what it is. I get up and think about lifting first. That's why I do it first. That's why I'm so pumped to get here in the morning and make it like I get to do what I absolutely love to do first in my day, every day. And, and it's, and no one can fuck with it at all. Right. Everyone I love and care about is sleeping and everybody I want to work with and be with is here and that's Mm -hmm. it. And so like the, um, I need people to make sure they continue to understand that about me because the reality is if that goes away, this goes away. If that's not there, this isn't here. If that's not represented, the lunges aren't represented. My daily fires ain't fresh. The content here ain't good. I ain't working on myself. Like all of it's so linked together 
But the backdrop, and that's why I try to explain to people, old school is where it all starts in it and where it's all kind of like mustard from, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so that, so yeah, us leveling up there between the crew and the guys and the techniques and the, and the push and the, the meets, that all feeds everything. I don't know if people, I think they do, but I wanted to just kind of reconfirm like, yo, I'm a fucking weightlifter. I'm a fourth generation weightlifter. I just happen to be the first one to do it for a living. And it's so true. And the opportunities, the internet and the past thing, like I got a real chance to do it. And I think any of the guys before me would have loved the chance, but they didn't get that chance or they didn't take that chance or there wasn't that opportunity, but there is here. So I think like that even even rings more true in the new situation with the the privatized gym and the crew and the invite whole thing like it it even another level to, to, for me so it, that that was a huge change too so yeah yeah just some, yeah what else <laughs> nothing chilling <laughs> chilling you're good yeah trey chilling cole you got anything else super excited for 2022 it's be big time. Interesting year. Yeah. I want abs contest coming up. You know, giving car away. Got a, a, a Ben's parked in the fucking office. <laughs> Don's like, <laughs> literally. Don's like, Don's like, oh yeah, I want to win that car or whatever. So I'm like, I'm like, I'm like Don, you already own part of it. Yeah, there you go. He goes, <laughs> yeah, you're right. I own a little yeah. part of that. <laughs> yeah, so good. Should, that's Let's gonna get be cool. Don back on the podcast. Yeah, we should. Yeah. Yeah. We need some more. Yeah, for more sure. Stories. Super pumped about releasing the. How to, build, how to Build Confidence book, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we haven't really talked about that. I need to start doing those little quick shows, too. Yeah. That's something awesome. I actually thought about uh, this week because that would help drive the book. Yeah. Book's coming out January 2022. Actually, I think they ship next week. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's a banger. Yeah, there yeah, will yeah, be yeah. audio, too. Yeah, there will be yeah. audio. I'm going to get if with... you like that Daily Fire Life. Yeah, man. I'm going to get with uh, Kyle and, and lace that out. And, uh, yeah, it's about to be a wrap. We good? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey. Appreciate you guys listening this year. Share it with your friends. Give us a five-star review. Uh, we're going to have some uh, capabilities to bring some guests on like remotely soon, which is going to be exciting. And, yeah, we're just going to keep building this thing in 2022 and kill it. Fuck yeah. So I'm your boy, Corey G, at Small Arms Danny, not at, tra at Trey Dier. What is the – it's Trayvon Deere on Twitter. At I Trayvon wish Deere. I had Trace Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. The guy took it. Yeah. And the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susex. We are out.